Let's talk about our beam display tab. Our beam display tab allows us to be able to change what we're seeing visually on the screen. And there's people in the world, some people see things in 2D, and there's other people that see things in 3D. It makes more sense sometimes to different people. Well, beam gauge is extremely powerful and it allows you to be able to do one or the other or both. So right now what we're seeing is we're seeing an, a 2D beam profile in this window here. So what we want to be able to do is we want to turn on our 3D beam profile. So I'm just going to click on our tools and I'm going to go over and I'm going to turn on 3D. That allows me to be able to see things in 3D. Okay, I can grab this, I can move it, I can tip it, tilt it. So it allows me to be able to see stuff on the back side or allows me to be able to see down deep on it. Okay, so what I can do is I can just go ahead and I can grab this and I can move it around a little bit if I'd like to. Kind of reposition it if I'm more interested in something else. Or I can go ahead and I can rotate it. if I have something that's around the back side that's interesting. Or if I want to, I can tip it and lean it forward to be able to see what's going on here and a lot more dimensional information. The nice advantage of beam gauge is beam gauge, these are called panels. Any of these panels I can move if I'd like to. I can go ahead and I can take this 3D panel and I can move it out and I can put it anywhere else I'd like to. So let's say I want to put it over here. So I can see my 3D in my bottom left hand corner and I can have my big 2D screen for alignment. Or I can flip them around. The advantage of beam gauge is I can even move this, one of these screens, over onto a completely different monitor. That way if I have two monitors and I want to be able to see it from a lot farther away or I want to see something in a lot bigger detail, I can put one on one monitor, one on another monitor. Any of these panels that you're seeing here, we can do the same thing with. So I can float my results if I want to, maybe put my results on a completely different monitor. So our next section is, our, is how we're seeing things visually. Right now we're seeing our color palettes in what we call our rainbow effect. Well in some areas you're going to be working with a laser and you've got glasses on and you can't see specific colors. Sometimes you can't see the red color very well, sometimes you can't see the green color very well because of the glasses that you're wearing on are designed specifically to block that wavelength. So what we give you the ability to do is you can change that. If I don't want to see it in a color, rainbow, I can change it to a grayscale. I can change it to a blue color. I can change it to a red color or a green color. And that way I can see a lot more information. So we're just going to go ahead and select the blue color. I should be able to see, I want to see the blue information. Show me the blue information. You can see here's all of our blue. Green is our saturation. And here it is in red. I should be able to see things. And if you're wearing those glasses, it's going to make it a lot easier to be able to see it. So we're going to go back to our rainbow color. We have the ability, if, if you have a very weak signal and you want to be able to see your colors down in that very low information, we can change what we call a Z-scale. The Z-scale compresses my color palette, so instead of being drawn over the entire dynamic range that we're seeing on the screen, I can compress that down a lot lower. Now I just do that by grabbing here and I pull way down and then it's only showing my colors in the region that I want to see it in. and allows me to expand things way off the screen. It's not hurting the camera, it's just digitally enhancing the signal that I'm seeing. And we can move it from the top down or we could move it from the bottom up. We can compress the video to where we want to see only the information in color that is important to us. So we'll reset that back to where we can see full screen again. And we're going to talk about this next option. This next option is called a color bar. Right now, these colors are just pretty on the screen. But if we want to make them a little bit more meaningful, we can turn on over here on the left. We've changed from just a color bar, a rainbow effect. We can now show you what is the density at that point. How many digital counts are concentrated in yellow color, blue color, red color. Okay. And we can correlate that. We talked a little bit about that power meter option. You can correlate that back. And you can correlate that to a power reading. So at that point, you could then start seeing power density numbers on your screen instead of just colors. We'll talk a little bit about that too. 
So this next window allows us to be able to turn on different functions in the screens that we're seeing. So one of the functions that we use a lot here in our 3D, we're going to move this window back over. In our 3D window, you'll notice that in the background, we've got some lines. We've got a grid pattern. We've also got a 1D slice information. And that's turned on up here in this section here. Allows us to be able to see these back planes. We can turn off our back planes. We can turn off the cursors. So you don't see anything on the, on the cursors. Turn off our crosshairs there. So that's information that allows you to be able to see what's going on in the 3D or in the 2D environment. If I switch over to 2D, I can do the same thing. I can turn off my cursors, off my profiles. Now, you may not be able to see it, but there's a little teeny red circle here. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that's what we're calling our origin. And that's what this is for. This tells me what's my zero, zero point? What's my point of reference? And right now, it's based off of going from this bottom left-hand corner, positive, and positive to the center. If I wanted to, I could change that. And in beam gauge, we have the ability, we can change that to the bottom left or to the, the center of the camera. That way you can align and bore sight things. And basically what it does is it's just gonna move. And you'll notice I've now got a red circle up there in my white area. That tells me that my, my beam is not quite centered on my camera. And I'm gonna put that back to my bottom left. This little menu right here is for changing my resolution on my 3D. Right now on my 3D display, I'm seeing that if I wanna get a lot more fine detail, right now I'm displaying at a five to one ratio. I get five pixels from the camera, show up as one pixel in the display. I can change that to a one to one aspect ratio, or I can change it to as low as a 10 to one ratio. That way I can see things a lot more coarsely or a lot more fine if I want to. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about uh, our cursors. And I need to go back to 2D to be able to show you that. So right now, our cursors are what's going the dashed lines, top to bottom, left to right. That is creating just the 1D profiles that you're seeing here on the screen. Right now, I'm tracking to the centroid of the beam. What the centroid is, is the centroid of intensity. It's not the center of mass. It's just the center of intensity. And I can change that. If I want to, I can sit, turn it on to the peak. And they may be, and in most cases, they're different. So I can have it track the peak, or I can have it track the centroid. I can manually position it if I want to. But just next door, we have a crosshair. And I'm going to turn on a crosshair, and you're going to be able to see two different points. So right now, it's disabled. And I'm going to have one track the centroid and one track the peak. So we've got the dash lines going top to bottom, and that's tracking the, the peak. But then I also have a plus symbol. That's my crosshair. That crosshair allows me to be able to track something else. And then I can actually see the separation between the two. And I can turn on a number in my results window that will allow you to be able to see the difference between the two. So as you're aligning something, you're wanting to get your peak intensity right in the center. allows you to be able to kind of walk those things right in together. So we have two different options. You've also got the ability if you've got two different spots you're measuring. Maybe I want to know the separation between this point and that point. Allows you to be able to plop one here and plop one there, manually position them, and then you can actually make a dis distance measurement between the two. These next little windows are basically for panning and zooming. If I want to zoom in, I can just click and I can slide in and it allows me to be able to see in a lot finer detail what's going on in that camera, in that particular region. In my 3D, these are the same controls that I just did with my mouse, but it allows me to zoom in, zoom out. Tip it, tilt it, rotate it. So those are all visual controls that you're able to play with there.